Hello and welcome to my channel. Today, we're diving deep into the world of solar power, the lifeblood of off-grid camping. We're outside on a beautiful sunny day to put 10 different solar panels to the test. I've gathered a whole lineup of 200 watt permanent and 400 watt portable solar panels, a mix of rigid and flexible, monocrystalline and polycrystalline, n-type and bifacial to help you figure out which one is the absolute best fit for your RV setup. We're talking specs, real world performance, and everything you need to know before you invest. All right, let's meet our 200 watt contenders. These are the panels you're most likely to mount permanently on your RV roof. First up, we have the Renogy 200 watt Shadow Flux N-Type Rigid Panel. It boasts some fancy tech like 16 bus bars for better current flow and bypass diodes that provide an alternative current path for the panel when a cell is shaded. But how much will all this tech help on this bright, sunny, clear day? Next, for those looking for a lighter curved surface option, the MH Powwow's 200 watt flexible monocrystalline panel with ETFE coating and 10 bus bars could be an option. This panel is advertised as a 200 watt panel, but I suspect the 200 watt rating is in a lab environment as the specification on the panel itself points toward a 165 watts real world rating. The flexibility of this panel is great, but do we sacrifice power and efficiency for that flexibility? Then we have the Opti Solex 200 watt N-type monocrystalline panel with 16 bus bars. So it has the latest and greatest technology and should be a strong competitor. As a bonus, this panel's price includes the mounting brackets. And then we have the Sun Gold Power 200 watt monocrystalline with nine bus bars. This panel does not have the N-type 16 bus bars by facial with diodes technology, but is still reported to be a strong performer. So how will this budget-friendly standard option match up against the newer technology panels? Over here, we have the least expensive option in the test, and it's loaded with all the latest tech, the HQST 200 watt 16 bus bars bifacial N-type panel. Bifacial means it can capture energy from both sides. Great for specific mounts that can use the bifacial technology. But is it overkill for a flat mount on an RV roof? Finally, we have two CalSun 100 watt monocrystalline perk 10 bus bar panels wired in series together to make 200 watts. This is a common strategy for tricky roof layouts, so we need to see how a split system option stacks up against a single pattern. Now for the portable panels. panels. These all have around 400 watts. They're fantastic for when you're parked in the shade, but need to set your panels out in the sun or need to top off your portable power station. So let's start over here. The EcoFlow 400 watt monocrystalline ETFE portable is a popular choice, known for its panel build quality and efficiency. However, setting up this solar panel is difficult as the bag doubling as the stand is a questionable idea at best. So is the lofty entry price worth it? Then we have the Opti Solex 440 watt monocrystalline and tight portable with 16 bus bar technology. Like the MH Powwow's flexible panel, the specs on this panel indicate this is a 400 watt panel. This panel does have the latest technology and does not require a stand. I love the simplicity, but how well it do against the others that are angled toward the sun. Next, we have the Zoop W 400 watt ETFE and type portable with 16 bus bar technology. This panel is a hard surface type panel with an aluminum frame and is easy to set up. The build quality seems solid, so let's find out if it can deliver the power. Finally, the All Powers 400 watt portable polycrystalline ETFE solar panel. Polycrystalline versus monocrystalline, a classic debate we can settle today. Okay, so the sun is out and there are no clouds in the sky. We really could not ask for better conditions. Now for this test, I plan to attach each of these solar panels to their own MPPT 
solar controller, but quickly discovered that solar controllers are not all built equally, resulting in data that just could not be compared. So to be consistent, All Powers was nice enough to send me their R2500 power station. We're gonna plug each one of these solar panels into this All Powers R2500 power station to capture the power being supplied from each of these solar panels. All right, so let's get started. The panels are all lying flat, just like they would be on an RV's roof. For the portable panels, I have them set up and will not be moving them throughout the day as I would not normally be moving them while camping. We're gonna start by measuring the output in watts over the peak solar hours today. We will document the maximum output and the average watts, capturing the results in this table and then graphing them on the same chart. From there, we will calculate a couple of key decision-making parameters, such as cost per watt and watts per area. This will show us which solar panel is giving us marketing hype and which is delivering the power. The results are in and wow, this is not what I was expecting at all. So let's go through the results. Let's start with the MH Powwow's flexible panel. RVers love these flexible panels for curved roof applications and that they are low profile. This panel is also the lightest in this comparison, but as expected, the results are the lowest of the group. Flexible panels often struggle with heat and don't dissipate it as well as rigid ones, which could be a factor here. They're great for curved rooftop installations, such as on a teardrop towable, but that flexibility results in less efficiency. Next is the OptiSolex N-Type. This panel has the modern technology element, but the maximum output did not match up to the other panels in this comparison. OptiSolex claims the output would increase when the panel is paired with their Solex brick. Also, the Solex brick is designed to allow for mixing of other brands of solar panels on the same array. This technology sounds amazing, and I will be testing this technology in a future video, so be sure to subscribe and set your alerts for that review. The HQST 200 watt bifacial panel collects energy from the front and the back. In this test, we were not getting much of a boost from the backside due to the dark driveway pavers. However, I did place a white styrofoam pad on the ground underneath the panel to see how the results would change. And I recorded about an eight to 10 watt increase. So the bifacial does work. The trick for RVers is how to get the most out of the bifacial when mounted on a roof. This panel did produce the lowest cost per watt hour of the 200 watt panels. Its entry price is simply amazing and is the lowest priced 200 watt panel in this comparison. Also, HQST has a nice 60 amp solar controller and even sells batteries if you're interested in creating an entire system. Next up is the Renogy Shadow Flux. It does appear that all the extra technology helped this panel's overall performance. This panel has the smallest area of all the panels tested here today, earning it high marks for having the most watts per area. Its overall output was also near the top of this comparison as well. As a plus, the diode bypass technology helps with its shade performance. In summary, this panel is an all around solid performer. Next up was a complete shocker for me, the Sun Gold Power Standard Monocrystalline Panel. This is a very popular, reliable workhorse without the cutting edge technology, but it still managed the highest maximum output tied for the highest watts per area and the highest watt hours produced of the single 200 watt solar panels. This is not what I was expecting and demonstrates why this panel is still a popular choice among RVers. Sun Gold Power also has a nice 60 amp 
MPPT solar controller, which I ordered for a potential future installation. Finally, our dual panel setup. The two Calsun 100 watt end types wired in series to get to the 200 watt total. This was another unexpected result as this combination produced the overall highest wattage, the highest watt hours, and the best cost per watt of the permanent panels. I suspected that this panel may be underrated, so I did test this series setup at an angle and it produced a maximum output of 221 watts, well above its rating. It appears from this result that breaking your array into smaller segments using the Calsun panels can give you better overall efficiency and more flexibility in placement. Now let's look at the portable solar panels. First up is the OptiSolex 440 watts. As I mentioned previously, the specifications indicate this panel is a 400 watt panel. Either way, this panel managed some impressive numbers for a panel with no stand. Just unfold it on the ground and attach the cable. I also really liked the lightweight and compact travel size of this panel. Next, we have the All Powers 400 watt portable panel. This budget-friendly panel uses the older polycrystalline technology instead of the more modern monocrystalline technology. Even with this older technology, the All Powers closely matched the EcoFlow's total watt hours. Also, this panel is less than half of the EcoFlow's price, earning it the lowest price per watt of the portable panels. Next, the EcoFlow 400 watts. What immediately stands out is the lofty price, which is significantly more than the other portable panels in this comparison. This panel is a solid performer and would have probably performed better if it had a stand that functioned properly. Finally, the Zoop W 400 watt portable panel is easily the best bang for the buck for a portable solar panel. This panel managed a peak output of 446 watts, which is way over its 400 watt rating. It has the smallest open area, produced the most watt hours, and had the most watts per area. So what does this all mean? Well, choosing the right panel depends on your application and your overall goal. So for roof mount applications where you're interested in the most power and are not worried about shading, you may want to consider the CalSun or Sun Gold power panels. If you have a highly reflective roof, you may be able to benefit from the HQST bifacial technology. If you find yourself off grid often with potential shading, then the Renogy Shadow Flex might be the one for you. Personally, I think I'm going to mount the Sun Gold panels on the roof of my RV and the HQST bifacial panels on the cabin of my boat as the white fiberglass and the sun reflection off the water should really boost the output. For the portable panels, I now see that my purchase of the EcoFlow was not my best decision as its bag stand is poorly designed and the overall output just did not justify the lofty price. If saving money is your priority, then go with the All Powers as its performance closely matched the EcoFlow, yet it's less than half the price. If power output combined with portability and ease of setup is the priority, then go with the OptiSolex as there is no stand it's compact and lightweight. Personally, I'll be trying the OptiSolex on my boat as I found its compact size and lightweight combined with the easy no stand setup should work well there. And I'll also carry the Zoop W in my RV because of its output power and easy to use stands. So thank you so much for joining me on this real world comparison test. If you have experience with any of these panels, drop a comment below. I'd love to know your thoughts. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Ruby Adventure Mom content. Stay charged, everyone. Bye for now.